Did you know that Alfa Romeo 4Cs are selling for $100,000 or more over in Europe? And I'm not talking about special Alfa Romeo 4Cs. I'm talking about your run-of-the-mill average Alfa 4C. Welcome to Game of Life 411. In today's video, I'm going to tell you about buying and selling exotic cars on a website called Bring a Trailer, and how the buyer of my Alfa Romeo 4C turned out to be a German whose plan was to take the car over to Europe and sell it there. It's a pretty brilliant plan, because if you could buy an Alfa Romeo 4C for about forty dollars or $50,000 here in the U.S., ship it over to Europe, and then sell it for ninety dollars or 100000 equivalent U.S. dollars, you're making a mint. What the heck is that thing on my face? I know you're trying to be polite and not stare, but I have to tell you, I was in the surgery center for about six hours two weeks ago, and I was supposed to come out looking like this. But instead, I look like this. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, the sad reality is that for about 25 years since I was in my early 30s, I have suffered with skin cancer, and I've had hundreds of skin cancers. This one was a new one, it was very deep, and I had to go get a special Mohs procedure to have it removed, and then they had to do some reconstruction of my face afterwards. So that's still healing. I will be doing a video about it because, like I said, I've got a ton of experience, sadly, with skin cancer. So I'd like to share some of that and hopefully help some others who suffer from skin cancer like I do. Please subscribe and stay to the end where I'll introduce our new subscription mascot, Nutless the Squirrel. I guess the first question you might ask is, what's the best way to buy or sell an exotic car like a Lotus Elise, an Alfa Romeo 4C, or even some of the special Porsches or other unique cars, antique cars, supercars, etc.? Well, there are lots of places you can buy and sell these cars, but I've found that one of the best is a website called Bring a Trailer. And by its name, Bring a Trailer, you could assume that it started as a website selling project cars, where you'd buy a car and you'd have to bring a trailer to take it home because it wasn't necessarily drivable. Well, Bring a Trailer has really evolved into a specialty marketplace for all kinds of unique cars, including project cars, but also just unique and specialty and exotic cars. So if you're looking to buy or sell a Lotus Elise, a Lotus Exceeds, an Alfa Romeo 4C, a Maserati, a Ferrari, a very special Porsche, you name it. You might even find something to make Father Guido Sarducci happy. What was the idea? Uh, it's a, it's a call it the Shrine Mobile. You know, people can't drive it to the shrines. You drive with the shrines to the people. You know, I figure you get these old trucks, put the statues under the back, put the, some rocks around the statues, put the, some, uh, like, a candles under the hood, you know. You get the seminarians to drive it to pay them peanuts. So here's my story. So I bought my Alfa Romeo 4C about two years ago, and I bought it for the deal. I wasn't getting my perfect spec, my dream car, anything like that. I had an opportunity while I was waiting for my Lotus Emira to come in to own and enjoy a car like the Alfa Romeo 4C for a year, I thought. And then because of further delays with the delivery of the Emira, I was able to enjoy that 4C for a full two years. So I'm glad I had the experience, and it was great. But as I said, I bought it for the deal. So I wasn't buying like my favorite color. I wasn't looking at all the specs and options on that car. I just wanted you know, a good deal on an Alfa Romeo 4C so I could own it and enjoy it and experience it. So I bought that car two years ago, as I said, and I bought it from a Porsche dealership up in Maryland. And I did enjoy it. And it was a relatively trouble-free car. Because the Alfa Romeo 4C is a uniquely constructed car, it's got a carbon fiber tub and a composite body, I wanted to make sure that I found a car that did not have an accident history, no salvage title, because those could really be negatives for a car like that. So I made sure that I bought the right car, and I thought I had. It did have some cosmetic defects, specifically the paint. It looked like it had driven through some sort of a caustic liquid because there was a splash pattern on the car and it had eaten through the paint. And I thought, okay, fine, you know, hopefully it's in the clear coat and I can just do some simple paint correction and be good. Well, it turned out that it went deeper than that. It went all the way down to the base layer and required about $3,000 to repair, but I repaired it. And the important thing is that the composite body had still never been in contact with anything. There were no cracks, there was no damage, no damage to that carbon fiber tub. So the car was solid. So I owned it for two years. I went to sell it on Bring a Trailer. I'm communicating with one of their agents and I'm looking at the market because Bring a Trailer also gives you some good statistics. They show you graphs of all the cars that have sold on their website of a particular type and mileage and things like that. So I can see all the Alfa Romeo 4Cs that have sold in recent history. I can see the prices that they sold at. 
and I can compare that with my own vehicle. And based on that, I thought, okay, I'll set a reserve price around $50,000 or $52,000. And almost immediately, the agent wrote back to me and said, well, based on the condition of your car, its mileage, and the damage report, we think that the reserve would be more like $42,000. And that was a big difference, right? That's $10,000 that I'd hoped not to lose on the resale of this car because I had about 56,000 in it and only owned it for two years. So I was like, what do you mean damage? I mean, there's no damage. I have a clean Carfax report that I got when I bought this car. It shows no damage whatsoever. And the guy's like back and forth several times, yes, the damage. I'm like, what damage? So he finally sends me a screenshot of a Carfax report that shows damage. And the damage report was not on the Carfax report that I got two years ago, but the damage was reported as having happened five years before I bought the car. So it was like six or seven years after the fact, they added this damage report to my Carfax. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. So I'm like, how can this be? And again, I'm digging in further trying to understand. And they did clarify that it's considered minor damage, which is often cosmetic. And so I'm pretty sure it was related to that paint defect that I mentioned a minute ago. Nevertheless, it's costing me 10,000 bucks. And that was a pretty bitter pill to swallow. So I paused my pursuit of bring a trailer. I did think initially that that was probably the best site to sell the car on. And I thought, okay, well, let me try to sell it in some other way. And so I listed it on Facebook Marketplace. I uh, created my own video on my YouTube channel and thought with my massive viewership, <laughs> that perhaps I could sell it that way. I advertised it on the Alfa Romeo 4C forums and tried to see if I could sell it that way. And what I found was, you know, I, I just wasn't having luck. I wasn't getting much traction. Uh, it was a little bit of a soft period in the market. Unfortunately, when I bought the car two years prior, it was still during some of the uh, inflated prices that came with the COVID lockdowns. And so if you remember that period, you know, all cars, but especially specialty sports cars, their prices just went through the roof. And so when I bought it, wasn't at the peak of that, but it was sort of at the tail end of that. So the prices were still elevated. Now, however, when I'm selling, the market has stabilized and perhaps even dipped. And so I'm looking at a low point in the market. So anyhow, I'm back and forthing this. I'm not getting any serious offers. You get these jokers out there offering you some ridiculously low price. And I'm like, yeah, I'm just not even gonna entertain that. You're being silly, you're wasting my time and your time too. This went on for probably a month or two and I was still anticipating the Lotus Amira. The reason I'd started uh, the process of listing the car is because I thought now that they were finally delivering these cars in the United States that I'd be getting mine soon. Well, I was still having a devil of a time getting any kind of concrete date or information from my Lotus dealer. After trying to sell my Alfa Romeo 4C for a couple months on my own and really not getting any good response, I had to reset my expectations and accept the fact that I was probably not going to sell this car for what I'd hoped. That this was going to be the first car that I was going to take a significant loss on. And like I said, that was a bitter pill to swallow because I have this deal with my wife where she allows me to enjoy these fabulous cars, but it can't be an expensive hobby. And so I've gone through a series of trades over the last so many years, and every car that I've bought and sold, I have either broken even or made a tiny profit. And so this is really the first one where I'm gonna have a significant loss. And like I said, that's a bitter pill to swallow. At any rate, I, I came to accept that. And so I went back to bring a trailer and I said, okay, I think that it makes sense to list on bring a trailer and I will set my reserve low. I think I set it at 41 or $42,000, which based on their recommendation and the market analysis and my car's mileage and condition, that seemed reasonable. So we did that. And the way it works then is that Bring a Trailer will schedule your car's auction. Steering in the Alpha is a little bit stiffer perhaps.
And the way it works then is that Bring a Trailer will schedule your car's auction. And auctions are typically one week. There are some alternative durations, but almost every auction is one week. And they will not run two concurrent auctions for the same type of specialty car. So they will not run two Alfa Romeo 4C auctions at the same time but they will run one, and then they will run another one almost immediately thereafter. So I had to wait a couple weeks until they could fit mine in because they already had several other Alfa Romeo 4C auctions in the pipeline. And when my auction came live, I did everything that they suggested. And I have to say that working with Bring a Trailer, they were very professional. They had all kinds of canned communications that they would share with me about the auction process and how to conduct a successful auction and how to be a good seller and all this kind of stuff. So I did everything that I could to uh, live up to those expectations and to be a good seller because I just figure you know, I want to be the kind of seller that I would want to interact with if I were the buyer, right? So I try to put on the other person's shoes and think about what they would want to expect. And I think I did a pretty good job. I, I tried to be very responsive. I got very positive feedback from other people on my auction saying, uh, for example, that, you know, I just had a very good experience. I'll share some of that with you. So I feel good about the auction process. When we got to the end, Bring a trailer, you know, you all you know is the username as you're going through this auction, you know, Johnny XYZ, whatever it is, you know, and you don't know anything else about the bidders on your auction site. And so when the auction came to an end, then Bring a Trailer sends you an email informing you of the winning bidder and giving you their contact information because they want you to reach out to them directly and then consummate the rest of the transaction between the two parties. Okay. So I get this email and I'm like, what the heck? That is a German phone number and a German email domain. What the heck? I'm in the United States. I don't know what to do here. So I immediately reached out to my agent at Bring a Trailer because I was concerned. I just wanted to sell the car. I wanted this to be a simple, quick transaction. That's part of the reason I went on Bring a Trailer. And I said to the agent, it's like, hey, uh, you know, I just got the contact info. This guy's in Germany. I'm concerned that this might complicate the transaction. They responded back immediately and said, like, oh, I'm sure that this buyer is, you know, very familiar with everything to do with shipping a car over to Europe, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I reached out to the buyer and his first question to me is like, oh, what do you know about shipping cars from the U.S. to Europe? I'm like, oh, crud. So I ended up working with that buyer for the better part of a week. And he really, I'm sad to say, had not done his research. This was the first time he was trying to buy a car from the United States. And he was trying to take advantage of that price differential, right? He knew that you could sell an Alfa Romeo 4C like mine for twice the price that he paid for it in the US. So if he bought my car, I think we agreed on I think we agreed on the price of $42,000. I think that was the winning bid. And he could sell that car for $90,000 or $100,000 in Spain or Italy or even in Germany over there. So that was his plan, but he hadn't done his research. Cars that are specced for one country are not necessarily interchangeable or can be legally sold in another country. And that's there's a big difference between the way they spec cars for sale in Europe and the way they spec them in the United States. And so at any rate, we went back and forth for a solid week before he finally just backed out. And throughout this whole process, Bring a Trailer just kept encouraging us to try and work it out. But ultimately, I just had to inform Bring a Trailer. It's like, hey, this is not going to work. This buyer is not going to consummate. And, you know, I couldn't keep just hanging on to the car on a wish and a prayer. Have I mentioned how rare and exotic the Alfa Romeo 4C is? So to their credit, what Bring a Trailer did then is, and this was at my request, they put me into contact with the second highest bidder. And I reached out to him. He was initially interested, but then the very next day he said, you know what? It's been a week since the auction ended and I've had a couple personal circumstances change where I need that cash. So I just can't 
execute this transaction and I would only buy a fun car like this with cash and I need that cash for my business right now. So I'm sorry I have to back out. So second highest bidder was out. Then they put me in contact with the third highest bidder and he was actually perfect, right? Uh, he and I immediately connected and he was very reasonable and we arranged a deal where we split the difference between uh, what he was willing to pay and the highest bid and the fees that he was not going to have to pay. And um, at any rate, I worked with him. I tried to be as good as possible. I even hung on to the car for an extra couple weeks because he actually had some personal plans where he had to travel to Annapolis for his son's graduation. And I was going on vacation and things like that. So um, I was like, yep, I'm happy to work with you on these things so long as uh, I have my garage free when I take delivery of the Lotus and Mira because I was not going to park that car outside. So he's like, yep, all sounds good. Um, he was actually up in the Boston area and so he did not want to travel down here and drive the car back. So he investigated and then hired a covered carrier to transport the car from Raleigh, North Carolina up to Boston, which I'll show you the footage of loading the car into that carrier. And that all seemed to work pretty fine. It did take a while. I mean, I think it was probably from the time we consummated the deal, I still held on to the car for another couple weeks, maybe. I, I can't exactly remember, um, but he took it and it was funny. It actually worked out really nice. You know, I always kind of thought, oh, it'd be so cool if I could do a photo shoot with all three cars, right? With my Lotus Elise, with the Alfa Romeo 4C, and then with the new Lotus Emira. But I thought, yeah, that's not gonna happen because I'll never have possession of all three cars at the same time. Well, it turns out that I did for just a couple days. And while I wasn't gonna drive the Alfa Romeo 4C because I didn't own it anymore, I did take it out in the driveway and took some pictures with my daughter of all three cars together. And that was pretty fun and special and I'm glad that I got to do it. The buyer subsequently took the Alpha 4C to a car show up in the Boston area and sent me a couple photos. He met up with uh, some other car aficionados, including another Alfa Romeo 4C owner who said, hey, you bought Pete's car. So that was kind of cool that I guess the car is somewhat recognizable because of the big logo on the roof. Um, and I guess, you know, within the Alfa Romeo 4C community, I'm somewhat known because of my, my videos. That's a fairly small, tight community. So anyhow, bring a trailer, I would say I would highly recommend. Very professional. I think it is a unique site for buying and selling unique cars, right? If you have a Toyota Camry or something like that, bring a trailer will not even entertain listing your car on their website. They're only looking for special, unique, antique project cars, right? So things like the Alfa Romeo 4C, Ferrari, Porsche, Mercedes, um, you know, Model Ts, all kinds of obscure antique vehicles. <laughs> I saw one on there once, it was a project. It was a like 1920s or 30s fire truck. <laughs> and one of my sons and I looked at that as like, oh wow, that would be kind of fun to restore. But uh, we passed. <laughs> Anyhow, so if you're looking to buy or sell an exotic car or something unique, then I would highly recommend bring a trailer. I do think that you will find the car you want. It probably is the safest and most reliable process for both buyer and seller to conduct a transaction of a vehicle like that. Um, bring a trailer really tries to make sure that everybody comes out happy and that it's a successful transaction. And I just think that you know, you've got more risk and more variability when you're looking on other sites. The other thing that's kind of unique on Bring a Trailer is that when you're dealing with very special niche cars, you'll have some, what do I wanna say? Some car nuts who specialize in that niche, who will chime in on the auctions. And I had that happen. Sometimes it can be positive, sometimes it can be negative, right? Sometimes uh, you'll have these guys chime in and they'll just start tearing stuff apart and really turn the auction to a sour tone. And oftentimes it's not warranted. It's uh, they're nitpicking stuff, they're questioning stuff that is probably shouldn't be questioned. Um, 
And then other times they can be very supportive and they can talk about how great the car is and what a unique experience it is to own the car and be part of the brotherhood of people who own that particular niche vehicle. So I was fortunate, I guess, that my auction, I had some of those car nuts participating and being supportive of my auction. Um, but I have seen some other auctions that went a little bit south. Now, perhaps the difference is that some of these car nuts are not as big a fans of bring a trailer as I am today. And my understanding is that part of the reason is because of wholesale and dealer sellers, right? So you have these dealers and dealerships and volume resale outfits that are pumping cars through bring a trailer. And I guess there are different criteria and different uh, financial deals between bring a trailer and these volume dealers. And when you're going through an auction with one of these parties, you're not dealing with the previous vehicle's owner. So you're not dealing with someone who necessarily knows that much about this specialty car. So I think in that case, you get a lot of antagonists, right? People who love that niche car and will just kind of, you know, dig at any opening with these uninformed sellers. Whereas I was an individual, I, well, I'm perhaps not an expert on the Alfa Romeo 4C. I did own one for two years and I loved the car and I knew a fair amount about it. So perhaps that's the difference. Um, you know, if you're an individual seller, I think it's a pretty supportive environment. So at any rate, I would recommend bring a trailer with some caveats, uh, both as buyer and seller. I still follow it regularly for cars that I'm interested in, and I would certainly consider buying or selling another car in the future on that platform. Cars get hot quick. Yeah, black in this area. Let's see, the car's traveling in good company. We've got a nice Audi and a Jaguar in there. It's interesting how the lift has those columns that come out of the uh, truck body and extend <coughs> upwards to give leverage. Ha <laughs> ha, I was just wondering if you were gonna ask. It's the silliest thing, you have to press that one button in the center console. Nope, just press it once and give it gas, it should go forward. There you go. Hey, how's it going? Jim, I hope you have an absolute blast with this car and enjoy many good years of driving the heck out of it. Take care, buddy. It's your world and I'm just a squirrel trying to get a nut to move your butt to Please subscribe now. You know you want to. And why not go nuts and set notifications on so you'll be notified every time I put out new content.